Hi and welcome to Lesson 8 Databases. This of course is a continuation of our look at the introduction level courses in our computer world. In previous videos we talked about the information security and I also talked about digital media being two of my more favorite topics to look at. Databases I have to deal with as far as web development and things like that but we're going to cover the very basics that you need to know about databases and the problem that we run into and the problem we run into a lot of our different topics is how far in the pool we can go because in a lot of these topics, what I mean by pool is in a lot of these topics we have a shallow end and we have a deep end and there's very little transition from a shallow end to a deep end in many of these topics. So for example, if we go too far in the pool, we all of a sudden get in over our heads with topics that we need to define more and more and more which are beyond what you really need to know for an intro course. So, but just like all of our other uh, materials, just like all of our other lessons, at the end of this lesson, I will give you additional resources that you can take a look at if you do need to know more about databases. And there's entire fields where you can learn about databases. There's degree programs and courses specifically on databases. So enough of that, let's actually start talking about databases. We'll begin by taking a look at what is a database. A database is a collection of interrelated data items that are managed as a single unit. That's one definition. Another definition is a collection of data stored in a computer in some organized fashion so that the desired items can be quickly retrieved according to various criteria. More or less, what we're looking at here is we have information, we have data, we have things that we need to know. For example, Facebook or any other social media, you have data items that you put in there. For example, your name, your location, your birthday. You are able to look at these things. You're able to sort by these things. You might have a contact form of some type. You might have an email program that keeps hold of contacts. I know on my phone I have contacts specifically for the Droid that are tied with my Google account. These are items. These are data items and they're interrelated in that I should be able to go, for example, um, you know, whose birthday is it this month? Uh, whose birthdays are coming up? And go through all those interrelated items, all those different names, and search and pull out birthdays. Or let's say, for example, that I'm going to have a barbecue at my house. I want to be able to go through all my contacts and pull out information based on who lives in the area. So I might go, who lives in Humble, Texas? And see who my friends are that live in the area. If I really want to get more involved, I might have a scheduling and a contact information where I might be able to pull up people's schedules, compare it to locations, and then schedule around that. In fact, when I was director of instructor training, that's exactly what I would have to do, is pull up schedules, pull up locations, combine the two, see who was free here, who was free there, and do that um, as well. Now, you do this. I don't know if you're aware of this. It might sound complicated, but you do this. When you register for courses, for example, at your college or you register for classes at your high school, you're going through a database system. You're seeing who the instructor is, what class they offer, and what times they offer. So, for example, if you're in college, you might be taking a BCIS course, you might be taking an intro course, and you've had to go and say, okay, I need this course. Here's the numbers for the course. Here's my free time. I don't have anything scheduled on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or Tuesday and Thursday. And I really don't want a morning course, but I really don't want to be there late at night. So I want something between, let's say, 10 o'clock in the morning and 4 o'clock in the evening. So you're pulling up the course. You're pulling up the time. And let's say that you know there's this really amazing professor out there. You might be able to also search by that professor's name. So this is what we're looking at when we're talking about databases. We're looking at interrelated items that ultimately we should be able to search and mine and use for our benefit. So let's take a look at some of the terms that we need to know in order to understand our conversation about databases. Data. Now this is not just the character on Star Trek The Next Generation. This is raw facts. Information entered into the computer. Raw facts. That's all it is. A field is the basic unit of data. It's a name number that describes an aspect of an object. So for example, a field could be birthdays. It could be street addresses. It could be you know, color preferences, you know, what's your favorite color? Is it blue, red, purple, green, what have you? It's it's that 
information that has a name to it, that has some sort of description to it. A record is a collection of fields. So for example, a field might be a birthday. It might be a street address. It might be a name. A record is those things put together. So for example, if I put a name with a birth date with a street address, I have a contact information. I have a record. Table or file is a collection of those records. So now we're taking a look at a, for example, a contact database. So people, not just one person, but a whole bunch of people in your in your contact information. It's a collection of related records stored as a single unit by the operating system. A database is a collection of tables or files. An instance is a copy of the database software running in memory. What we're looking at here is when we're talking about, let's say, corporate-wide databases, you're really not manipulating the actual database. What you're doing is you're loading a database into your computer memory. In fact, you do that with all software. You run Windows from memory. You run your Mac OS from memory. It's loaded from your hard drive into memory. So, for example, if you're in a corporate world and you're playing with database, you're loading an instance of that database into your memory, and that's where you're working from. And finally, some last terms to know are database management software, DBMS. This is the software that allows us to create and use a database, and a database administrator, a DBA. And this is the person who creates, installs, configures, and manages the database. So these are like the system network engineers from previous conversations where they specialize in a particular field. So if you want to specialize in databases, creating databases, administering databases, all that good stuff, then you can be a database administrator, a DBA. Okay, our next video, we're gonna take a look at database management systems.